Welcome to another Achieving Science video. This video is going to look at the greenhouse effect. So when carbon burns, it requires oxygen. The reaction produces carbon dioxide. At the same time, when hydrogen burns in oxygen, the reaction produces water. Now why say this? Well, methane is a gas. Methane is a gas we use regularly and it contains carbon and hydrogen. So when it burns, it produces carbon dioxide and water. And therefore, this can be represented via the word equation. Methane plus oxygen produces water and carbon dioxide. This can also be summarized as a simple equation. Methane has the formula CH4, oxygen, we would need two moles of this, so it's two lots of O2, produces two molecules of water and two molecules of carbon dioxide. Now why is this important? Our Earth is very important. We are able to live on Earth as there is the right balance between the heat we get from the sun and the heat that radiates back into space. But why is this so? We need to know about this in a bit more detail then. So how is this possible? Well gases in the atmosphere naturally act like an insulating layer, kind of like a blanket. They absorb most of the heat that we would normally be radiated out into space and at the same time they re-radiate back in all directions. Let's now have a look at this fire a diagram and in a bit more detail. So if we take planet Earth, we've got the atmosphere around it and we've got the sun shining upon us. Most radiation is absorbed by the Earth's surface and warms up. Some of the infrared radiation passes through the atmosphere. Some is absorbed and re-emitted in all directions by greenhouse gases. This warms the Earth's surface and the lower part of the atmosphere. Infrared radiation is emitted also by the Earth's surface. If this didn't happen, then all the heat would leave at night and we would just get too cold. Too cold to be able to actually live on Earth. So we need to know then what is in the atmosphere. Why is the atmosphere so important? Well, within the atmosphere, the main greenhouse gases that allow this process to happen are carbon dioxide and methane. This means that if we change the amount of carbon dioxide and methane, it can lead to global warming. So the release of carbon dioxide and methane needs to be monitored. So a major source then of carbon dioxide is from burning, combustion of fossil fuels. So this includes coal, oil and gas and happens in factories, cars, planes for instance. At the same time, Deforestation is also having an impact because we are cutting down many forests which means there is less trees. Less trees means less carbon dioxide is being absorbed for photosynthesis and more carbon dioxide is being released as these trees are then burnt and the land is cleared. As our population grows we rear more cattle for meat used in burgers and fast foods. These cattle produce methane, another greenhouse gas, and will increase the amount of methane in our atmosphere. Other examples of methane can be from rice fields and natural productions from marshlands, decomposition of waste and rotting plants. If 
Finally, let's have a look at some of the issues. What some of the effects of global warming are. Well, the release of more greenhouse gases is causing the temperature of the Earth to rise. It's rising at a rate of about 0.06 degrees every 10 years, which doesn't seem much, but the impact is a lot greater. The impact could be loss of habitats, when low-lying areas are being flooded by rising sea levels. There could be changes to the migration patterns of animals. And other issues, such as global weather patterns, will change. Drought in some places and flooding in others which causes issues for food supply. The melting of polar ice caps will raise sea levels, causing increased coastal erosion and flooding of low-lying land.